Similar to working in a spreadsheet, it's important to know how to select, filter, and sort data in a pandas data frame. These are important and common functions that any data analyst needs to understand to effectively clean and analyze their data sets. So to get started, we can actually select a specific column or row from a data frame by simply referencing either the column name or a row index. So let's start off with the first example here by selecting a single column. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you import pandas as PD and then also using the read CSV function here, we're going to reference that rewards data set that we worked with previously. And so if you wanna pull out a specific column, we can simply reference that data frame and we will then reference subsequently one of the columns, which there's a column here called city. So if we actually run that, it will print out the top five rows and the bottom five rows from that column. Now, individual rows and columns in a data frame are actually stored as pandas series. So to confirm that that's the case, let's actually pass a reference to this city column into the type function to actually display the data type, just so we can get an understanding of the relationship here between these series and data frames. So I'm just gonna reference the type function and I'm going to pass in this value here. And so we can see here now that this is in fact a pandas series object. And understanding the relationship between series and data frames really is key to grasping how pandas manages data. When you select a single column from a data frame, what is returned is actually a series object. So in effect, a data frame really is just a container for multiple series objects. And all series objects share a common index, which in fact is the row labels of the data frame. So if we wanna go ahead and see what that looks like, let's again reference our rewards DF and then the city column. And then I'm just gonna reference the index attribute and then inside that, the particular values. And again, I'm just trying to get an understanding here of how things are organized so again, it is a series, an individual columns a series, and then you can see here that we have these indexes, and we can there there's just the numbers that are starting at zero, all the way up to n minus one of what our total number of rows are. Now within an individual series, all of the elements must be of the same data type, meaning that the series values must be homogeneous, similar to an array. This uniformity is what allows pandas to optimize performance especially when performing numeric computations. A data frame itself being a collection of series objects can therefore hold multiple data types. Different columns, meaning series, can hold different values, allowing for a very diverse data set to be held within a single data frame container. Now, if we want to view all the data types of all the columns in a data frame, we can simply reference the pandas D types property. So to do that, we're just going to again type in our data frame here, and then there's an attribute called D types. And when we run that, it's going to display all of the data types that are currently set. Now, when you create a new data frame without specifying the data types for each of the columns, the default data type assigned to columns is usually going to be float 64 for numeric columns, and this generic object data type for columns containing mixed data types or non-numeric data such as strings. Pandas will also try to infer the appropriate data types based on the data you provide when you create the data frame. For example, if all the data in a column are integers, then pandas will assign the int64 data type to that column. If a column contains strings, it will be assigned the generic object data type. Pandas uses these default and inferred data types to optimize both memory usage and the data manipulation operations that you're gonna perform. To change the data type of a data frame column after it's already been created, you can use the dot as type method. This is especially useful when you want to enforce a specific data type or when pandas automatic inference does not match your data requirements. For example, if you want to change the available points column to a float, which is currently an integer. So to accomplish that, what we would do is we want to reference that specific column. So we're gonna say rewards underscore DF. And then I'm going to reference the actual name here, which is available points. And I'm just gonna copy and paste it to make sure I don't have any spelling errors there. 
and then I'm going to set it equal to itself because I'm reassigning its data type to itself. So we'll say rewards available points equals rewards available points. And then we're going to reference this as type method here. And we're going to pass in the data type that we want to use here. And so in this case, I want to change it to a float. And then we'll go ahead and print out again, the D type values. So we can see here that available points was originally integer and now it's been changed to a float. So that's how you can, and you can go through for as many columns as you would like and change the data types. Now, since each individual column we select is stored as a series, when we want to select multiple individual columns, the result actually needs to be stored as a new data frame. So to accomplish this, we can wrap column references in double brackets and assign the result to a new data frame variable. So here, let's go ahead and pull out the columns that relate to location. So we have city, state, and zip, and we'll store that in a new data frame called locations df equals rewards df. And then I'm gonna use double brackets here again because I'm selecting three different series columns and I wanna combine them into one data frame. And if you don't use double brackets, you will actually get an error. So uh, if you forget, it'll remind you. And so we'll type in city, state, and then also our zip here. And we'll go ahead and just visualize this. And as you can see here, it's pulled out those three columns and created an entirely new data frame with the same number of rows, but just those three columns for us. Now we can also select rows by index using what's called the iLock method. And so iLock stands for integer location based indexing. Uh, and it allows us to select rows and columns using index integer positions, which makes it useful if you're trying to slice a data set or select specific elements with exact row and column numbers. And so here, if I want to just pull out, for example, the first row from my data frame here, we'll say rewards underscore df, and then dot I lock, and then we're going to use brackets here and pass in the value zero, which is going to be my first row. And so if I actually run that, we'll see here, this record is going to print out with each one of the column headings here, and then the associated value. So it's essentially a set of key value pairs. Now, if you want to select multiple rows, you can use the same exact approach here and you can set a range. And so this is very similar to slicing a string or slicing a list. And, and we did a little bit of this when we explored looking at series, but now we're looking here at data frames of slicing those. And so here, if I wanted to select the second record, which would be position one, all the way up to, but not including the third, or in this case would be the fourth row, then I would use this here. And so that would print effectively rows two and rows three, uh, re remembering that everything is zero relative here. And so that gives us again, user ID two and three, those second and third records from the data frame. Now we can also select rows in a data frame using specific row labels. And this requires two steps. First, you need to set the column that contains the value you want to select based on as the new data frame index. So right now our data frame index is just the generic numeric values. And we want to actually select based on labels. So what you have to do is actually replace that index that we currently have with one of the columns from our data frame. Uh, it sounds complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set the state column as our new data frame index because I wanna actually select rows based on state values. And so this is kind of getting into our filtering. We can filter down a data frame based on a particular column value. And so we're gonna say rewards underscore DF. And then we're going to use the set index method and we'll pass in the column that we want to set as the new index. So that'll be state. And we need to use this in place argument, which will modify the data frame directly without us having to assign it to a new data frame. So basically what this means is in place is we're making the changes to the data frame in its place, its current place. And then if we wanna go ahead and visualize just a couple of the rows, we'll just say head and I'll just type in or here to see 
four of the records. And so you can see now what used to be a numeric generic index here has now been replaced with the state column has been moved over into the index position. So now if we want to select records based on a particular state value, we can go ahead and use the lock indexing method, which will select rows based on a specific index label. And so to accomplish that, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually, I wanna pull out all the records that relate to the state of Georgia. And I'm not gonna do this in place, I'm actually going to create a new data frame to just store records related to the state of Georgia. So let's go ahead and call that Georgia DF, and we'll set that equal to rewards DF. And we're gonna reference it with the lock method here, which again, lock is indexing where we're selecting based on label values. And we need to give it the specific label value that we wanna select based on. And so again, if we just take this and run it, we'll see here that this is just the three records that are in our data set that relate to Georgia specifically. And if, you know, are we unsure if this is the full data set, we can just hit shape here and run it and see, yes, there in fact are only three row records that contain the value Georgia for the state. Uh, again, if you were had any question if this was all the records that got pulled out. Now, just like a series, you can also filter a data frame using specific conditions. So if you recall in our series video, the last example we went through, where we filtered for a particular numeric value, we can do the same thing here with a data frame. So we'll just go ahead and give it a name. We're gonna create a new data frame here. And what I wanna do is I actually want to pull out, I wanna look here at the total points earned, and I wanna pull out records for any users in this data set because this reward data set, if you've spent some time looking at it, is actually a collection of different users with some information about their birthday, their city, state, and zip, and then information about points that they have earned in some sort of rewards program. And so I wanna pull out records that relate to the top earners in my data set, which I'm going to define as anyone who has earned greater than 25,000 points. So to do that, we're gonna create a new data frame and we're gonna reference our rewards data frame. And inside of this, this is where it gets a little bit strange. We actually want to reference the data frame, a particular column, and then see and create a comparison here, a Boolean expression, to compare the values of that column against some number, in this case will be 25,000. So I actually need to take this data frame and put it inside of itself here. And then I'm going to reference the total points earned. And then I'm gonna say greater than 25,000. So what I've done here is I've created a Boolean expression, right? And so I'm referencing the data frame outside of the break, the brackets here. And inside the brackets, I'm saying, all right, I want to compare the values of the total points earned column that is inside the rewards data frame. And I want to select values that are greater or select rows that have values for this column that are greater than 25,000. And so if I take this and we'll go ahead and visualize it, we'll see here that these are all the records for users that have earned greater than 25,000 points. And you can look here at the total points earned column to verify that that is the case. Now to take this a step further, we can actually sort records in our data frame based on column values, which is a very common task that Pandas provides us with. And so what we'll do here is we'll, we'll focus on our top earners data frame here. And we're going to sort based on that total points earned column that we've now, you know, we, we filtered down and now we wanna sort it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reference the data frame and then we're going to use what's called the sort values method. So we'll say sort values. And there's a couple parameters here. And if you're ever curious about this, you can reference the pandas documentation for all of these methods to see what are the different parameters that you can use and the different parameter values. And so here 
I want to set the by parameter to my column. So I'm going to say sort this by the total points earned column, right, which is this column right here. And we want to sort it in descending order. So I'm going to go ahead and set the ascending parameter equal to false. Now, if we wanted to change the direction of the sort, we could set this to true and it would change it to an ascending order as opposed to a descending order. And so we'll go ahead and run that. And you'll see that it is now sorted these values here from largest to smallest. And if you look at the previous example here, they weren't sorted at all, right? So we have those in largest to smallest. If we wanted to go the opposite direction, all we have to do is just copy this line of code and then just change this from false to true. And we'll see those values in an ascending order there from smallest to largest. Now you can also sort records using multiple columns, similar to how in Excel, if you ever used the sorting function in Excel, you can create layers of sorts. You can do the same thing here in pandas. And all you have to do is just list the columns one after the other. So I'm going to just go ahead and take uh, the line of code before where ascending is false. And I'm going to sort first by state. So we'll say state here. And then within the state category, I will sort the total points earned in a descending order. And so right now you can see the state column is not sorted and there's actually only three state values here because we have a lot of blank values, which we'll get into later. But when I run this, you'll see that it sorts the state column. And then within that, it sorted the total points earned, which isn't really evident because there's only three entries of states and each one of them is just an individual entry. But if you look at the blank state values, these, these not available, you'll actually see that these are in fact sorted in a descending order. It's also very common to sort records based on their index values, whether that's numeric or otherwise. And so to accomplish this, we can actually reference this top earners data frame here, and we will just call the sort index method. And we run this, it will actually sort the state because the state is currently the index. It will sort that in uh, alphabetical order for us. That covers the fundamentals of selecting, filtering, and sorting data in pandas. In our next video, we'll dive headfirst into wrangling data with pandas. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and click that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos or lessons.